This is Ms. Black with Open Campus, and we are in Math College Algebra 102, and we are now in Module 17. In Module 17, remember, we've been working on vocabulary words with graphing, so we just finished the words domain, range, and function. So what we're going to be doing now in this module is talking about some more words with graphing. So you'll see this module will be broken up into four short little sections, because I broke it up so that you could work on one vocabulary word at a time. So if we go to our notes today, we're going to be talking about one vocabulary word today in Module 17A, which is a piecewise function. So let's go to our notes. So if we look here, we have a definition. A piecewise function is a function that is defined by two or more equations over a specific domain. In basic words, what that means is you have a function in pieces. Now remember, our famous function notation is f of x. And we're used to seeing like f of x equals 3x plus 5, f of x equals negative x squared plus 6. We're used to seeing one equation, one equal sign with our function notation. Well, with a piecewise function, you will not just see one equation. If you look down in my first example, do you all see c of t? Well, c of t is function notation. Again, we're not using that f of x, but it's still a function notation. And if you look, it says equals, and then there's two pieces. There's one on top of each other. So that's what a piecewise function is. It's a function notation that relates to more than one equation. Now, you're probably saying, why would that be important? Well, here's a realistic example, and you guys have to think back to the early 90s. So if you were around in the early 90s like I was, when cell phones had first come out to the general public, when you bought a cell phone, you had to purchase a cell phone plan. And that plan was based on how many minutes you wanted per month. So here's an example. A cell phone company has the following plan. You will pay $20 per month for 60 minutes, and you'll pay 40 cents for each additional minute. Well, what happened is back in the early 90s, when you went and bought a cell phone plan, for them to figure out your total cost of your bill each month, they had to write your bill in pieces. So the equation that went with your bill was not one equation, it was several equations based on the plan. So we're going to go up to the board and look at this equation in more detail. All right, so here we are in the early 90s. We're buying a cell phone, and they come in and they say, all right, you have to buy a plan. So you go in and say, okay, I want to buy this plan that if I speak for 60 minutes, I pay a flat fee of $20. And if I speak over 60 minutes, then I'll have to pay for the additional minutes. Well, as a mathematician, to write the equation for how much your bill is going to be, it would be in pieces. Your function notation, C of T here, is very specific to what we're talking about. In the real world, we don't use Fred F of X. We use variables that make sense. So C here is representing cost, and T is the time that you talk. So the cost for the time you talk will equal. And then you'll notice these two pieces. That's a piecewise function. Well, the cost for you talking would equal $20. And then there's here this restriction or condition. Well, this is important. I just said, according to the company, we're going to pay $20 if we can talk for about 60 minutes. And that's what this say is saying here. I'm going to pay $20 if I talk between 0 and 60 minutes. But the minute I talk over 60 minutes, my cost is going to change. And that's what this bottom piece is representing here. Because if I talk 61 minutes, not only do I got to pay the, pay the flat fee of $20, I also have to pay the additional 40 cents per minute. So that's what this piece is representing. If I talk over 60 minutes that month, I would pay the $20 plus the 40 cents for the extra minutes. So if you had a cell phone in the early 90s, the programming of your bill was written in pieces like this. Now we can use this function, this piecewise function, to find answers. 
If I want to know how much it's going to cost me to talk 40 minutes, well, 40 minutes is representing T. So I know here T is 40. Well, the question is, if I want to talk for 40 minutes, what piece of the function am I looking at? The top piece or the bottom piece? The way you'll know which piece of the function you're looking at is you'll look over here at the conditions or the restrictions. Your time for talking is 40 minutes. Is that greater than 60? No. So you're not looking at that bottom piece. Is that time 40 minutes between 0 and 60? Yes, it is. So for your cost, you're looking at the top piece. Well, it says C at T equals 20, which means if you talk for 40 minutes, you're paying that flat fee of $20. Now, suppose that month you talked for 80 minutes. Again, your function is in pieces, hence the word piecewise. If we talk for 80 minutes, which piece is our cost, the top or the bottom? Well, again, we're going to look here. Is 80 between 0 and 60? No, it's not. We're not looking at the top piece. Is 80 greater than 60? Yes, it is. So we're looking at the bottom. So our equation is C at T equals this bottom piece, 20 plus 40 cents, T minus 60. And now because we have a variable in here, T, and we know T is our time talking, 80, we'll just substitute it in. We'll write the cost for 80 minutes would equal 20 plus the 40 cents, 80 minus 60. And that makes sense. If we talk 80 minutes, we're paying for 20 extra minutes. And that's what this is going to show us. Here's the flat fee of $20. Plus, we're going to pay 40 cents for the extra minutes. Well, the extra minutes are 80 minus 60, which is 20. And now we'll figure that out. The cost for 80 minutes would be 20 plus 40 cents for 20 minutes is $8. So if we talked 80 minutes on the phone that month, it cost us $28. So all you need to understand is we're talking about function notation today. But a piecewise function has pieces. And all you have to do is pay attention to what your number represents and figure out which piece it goes with. All right, if you look at your notes, I believe we have another example that's a little bit bigger. So let's look at that piecewise function. So let me erase this one. All right, so our second says, this is good old algebra, f of x, there's Fred. And if you look, he's in three pieces. It says Fred is negative 3x plus 7 if, if it says 4, x is less than negative 1. So that's the first piece of Fred. The second piece of Fred says f of x equals x squared plus 3, 4, negative 1, less than or equal to x less than 4. But then there's a third piece of Fred. f of x equals 5, 4, x is greater than or equal to 4. So Fred has three pieces. These are three distinct equations. You will know which equation you're going to use, evaluate, depending on what your conditions are. So let's look at our first condition. Our first condition says in our notes, f of 3. All right, this variable, we've already discussed this in function notation. This number is in the variable, the place of x. So this is your x value. You know x is 3. Well, is 3 less than negative 1? No. So we're not using the top piece. Is 3 in between negative 1 and 4? Yes, it is. Remember, this was, remember we talked about this a long time ago in the beginning modules. X is sandwiched between these two numbers. It means it's in between. Yes, 3 is in between negative 1 and 4. So we are going to use this piece, this equation. So we're going to write f of x equals x squared plus 3. We're going to replace x with the number we're using, 3. So f of 3 equals 
3 squared plus 3. And then we're going to do our arithmetic and work that out. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. What you guys have done is you've made an ordered pair. I've given you x, the domain. You've gotten out y, the range. You've made a point on that function, that piece. So far, so good? All right, let's try the next one. Part B says f and negative 2. So again, function notation, we are in three pieces, piecewise function. How do you know which piece to work with to evaluate? You look at your conditions or restrictions. Our x value is negative 2. Is negative 2 less than negative 1? It sure is. So this will be the piece we use. We are going to use this first equation. f of x equals negative 3x plus 7. What is our x value? Negative 2. That equals negative 3 times negative 2 plus 7. Then we'll do our arithmetic. Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. 6 plus 7 is... 13. So f and negative 2 is 13. You've made another point on Fred. That's his x value, his domain, negative 2. That's his y value, his range, 13. Pretty easy, right? All right, let's try the third one. The third one says, part C, f of negative 1. All right, so again, we know that this is our x value, function notation, f of x. Our x value is negative 1. Is negative 1 less than negative 1? Well, no, it's not, so we can't use the first piece. Is negative 1 in between negative 1 and 4? Well, it's not really in between. It equals it. So if you read this, look at this. There's the equal sign. Can negative 1 equal negative 1? It sure can. So we're going to use this middle piece again. So we're going to write it. f of x equals x squared plus 3. Now we're going to fill it in. Our x value is negative 1. So we're going to write negative 1 squared plus 3. Then we're going to do our arithmetic. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. So when you substitute in negative 1 for x, you get out 4 for y. That's Fred's domain. That's Fred's range. Okay, I think we only have one more example. Let's try one more to make sure we get it. So I don't want you to be afraid of a piecewise function. It's just several equations pieced together. The hardest part is you deciding which piece to use. Just look at your conditions or restrictions. So the last one says f of 4. So on part D, again, this number represents our variable f of x. So that's f, so that must be x. Is 4 less than negative 1? No. Is 4 in between negative 1 and 4? No, it's not in between. 4 equals 4. Well, does that say equals? Does that say 4 equals 4? No, it does not. So we're not using the second piece. This says 4 is greater than or equal to 4. That's correct. 4 is equal to 4. So we'll be using the third piece. So it says f of x equals 5. Again, this 4 represents x. Well, wait a minute. On the right side, do you have an x? No, you just have a constant. So there's no way to take this 4 and substitute it in, which means the right side's going to stay 5. So it doesn't matter what x is, it's not going to change this value. When x is 4, y is going to stay 5. So that's pretty much all there is to a piecewise function. And again, the reason why we showed it to you is because it is practical in real life. Another place, just so you all know, that we use piecewise functions is when you go to the post office. When you take a package to the post office, what's the first thing they do? They put it on the scale and weigh it. And depending on its weight, depends on what price it will be. So if a package weighs between 3 and 6 ounces, it's this price. If it weighs between 8 and 10 ounces, it's this price. If it weighs over a pound, it's this price. That's a function in pieces. So that's the importance of understanding 
the, the concept of a piecewise function. Okay, next module will have another definition. See you then. Thank you.